Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module, we'll continue our journey looking at the views of the Trauma Fast Exam. Hopefully, you've had a chance to join me prior for the views of the right upper quadrant, and in this module, we're going to look specifically at the left upper quadrant views of the Trauma Fast Exam, known traditionally by two terms, the spleno-renal, or the perisplenic views. In an upcoming module, we'll look specifically at the suprapubic view or bladder view of the trauma fast exam. There's a lot of information we can gain by looking at the left upper quadrant in our trauma patients, and we'll need to know that it's not a mirror image of the right upper quadrant, that the spleen offers less of an acoustic window onto the left upper quadrant than the liver does on the other side. Here's a slide reviewing how to perform the left upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam. As a spleen offers less of an acoustic window on the left upper quadrant, we need to bring the probe in from a more posterior position. Thus the mantra, knuckles to stretcher. Optimally, we're using a smaller footprint probe that can get in between the ribs and get a good view into the left upper quadrant area. Position the probe in the long axis view with the probe marker towards the patient's head at about the mid axillary line or posterior axillary line with your knuckles almost touching down to the bedside. We'll concentrate on two areas, most importantly, the area above the spleen and below the diaphragm where fluid will preferentially accumulate, but rounding out our exam, we'll look inferior at that spleno-renal space. Now that we know how to perform the left upper quadrant view of the trauma fast exam, let's take a look at a normal ultrasound image. I have the probe oriented towards the patient's head, so superior chest cavity is towards the left, inferior abdominal cavity towards the right. Notice the spleen, the large organ in the middle of the image here, and the kidney, the football-shaped organ, as seen inferior and posterior to the spleen. Notice the curving white line just above the spleen, which is the diaphragm. Recall that in the left upper quadrant that fluid will pr accumulate preferentially in between the spleen and the diaphragm and will be a dark or anechoic stripe positioned there. Here's another normal video clip taken from the left upper quadrant. In this case, I'm swinging the probe from inferior, looking at the spleno-renal interface, to superior, looking at that infradiaphragmatic space. And here as I freeze the image, we see the spleen right in the middle of the image, the curving white line making up the diaphragm, and notice the thoracic cavity as seen just left or superior to the diaphragm. If the patient had a significant hemothorax or fluid collection in the thoracic cavity, that would be represented by a dark or anechoic fluid collection just above the diaphragm in the thoracic cavity. Now that we've had a chance to examine several normal video clips as taken from the left upper quadrant, let's look at a pictorial here showing a positive left upper quadrant fast exam. Here we see superior located to the left, inferior to the right. We see the spleen in the middle of the image, the kidney inferiorly to the right, the thoracic cavity with the diaphragm to the left of the spleen or superior. We see the area of fresh fluid is demarcated by the orange color and notice that it layers out predominantly below the diaphragm and above the spleen. And this is the area where fluid will preferentially deposit in the left upper quadrant. There are ligaments that sling from the diaphragm all the way to the colon that prevent the flow of fluid into that area between the spleen and the kidney until the fluid is relatively large within the left upper quadrant. So now let's take a look at a positive exam from a trauma patient. And we see here the spleen in the middle of the image, the kidney inferiorly located to the spleen, and notice the large amount of fresh fluid, that dark or anechoic fluid collection that layers out above the spleen in the infradiaphragmatic location and anterior to the spleen. This indicates a large amount of fresh blood in the left upper quadrant, and we also see a blood clot, that echogenic material, waving around anteriorly to the spleen. So a positive exam in a trauma patient. Here's another positive left upper quadrant view. Notice here, there's a larger amount of fresh fluid present on this examination. We see the spleen in the middle of the image, the kidney inferiorly there to the right, and all the dark fresh fluid, as indicated by the dark or anechoic fluid collection as seen, infradiaphragmatic and above the spleen. Notice again that the fluid is not preferentially layering out in between the spleen and the kidney, reinforcing the point that this is not a mirror image of the right upper quadrant. Here's another positive examination in a patient who comes in hypotensive after being hit by a car. Notice I'm swinging the probe between the kidney up superiorly to look at the spleen. Notice the absence of fluid in between the spleen and the kidney, but the presence of free fluid right above the spleen and below the diaphragm is indicated by that dark stripe. 
Here's an interesting video clip from a trauma patient. Again, we're looking at the left upper quadrant and we delineate the spleen and kidney. Notice the presence here of a fresh fluid, the dark or anechoic fluid stripe as seen layering out superior or an anterior to the spleen there. But let's look above the diaphragm here, which we see is the curving white line moving up and down as the patient breathes. And what we notice here is the presence of a dark fluid collection within the thoracic compartment. So we're able to diagnose in this patient an associated hemothorax in addition to the hemoperitoneum. So the left upper quadrant view also helpful for looking into the thoracic compartment as well as diagnosing intraabdominal injury. One maneuver that can help you uncover fresh fluid within the left upper quadrant is to have the patient take a deep breath and analyze that infradiaphragmatic space as the diaphragm moves upward off of the spleen. Notice here that we uncover the amount of fresh fluid that's present right above the spleen and below the diaphragm as the patient takes a deep breath and that diaphragm moves superiorly. So in conclusion, I'm glad I could share with you this Sound Bites module going over the trauma fast exam, specifically the left upper quadrant or perisplenic view. There's a great deal of information that we can gain by looking into the left upper quadrant in our trauma patients, and it's important to realize that the left upper quadrant is not a mirror view of the right upper quadrant, and that fluid will preferentially layer out in the area above the spleen and below the diaphragm in contrast to the hepatorenal space on the right upper quadrant. So I hope to see you back as Sound Bites continues and we move on to look at the suprapubic or bladder view of the trauma fast exam.